continue. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. He said, Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you were born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible, Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me, when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and, and returned. But the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in Him will have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent His Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. John 1, 1 through 17. Father in heaven, help us now as we look at Your Word. Lord, I pray that You would show us these wonderful things that we're to learn, and not just in our mind, but to apply to our lives. Thank You, Lord, that Your Holy Spirit works to transform your people. Those that hear and believe can be changed by the powerful working of your Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Back where we were, what was it Nicodemus exactly needed? Here's a religious leader who had uh, in all appearances, everything that the world would want and certainly everything they thought that God would want. He had all the training necessary uh, to be a respected religious leader in their community. One of the most powerful men in town. And yet in his life there was something missing. Something missing. Terribly missing. God's love, God loved the world, Jesus told him. This was missing in Nicodemus' life. Nicodemus didn't have God's gift. He gave his only begotten son. He was talking with God's gift, but Nicodemus had not received God's gift. Jesus was offering to him this invitation. Whoever believes on him would not perish because Nicodemus was headed for destruction. Scripture says he needed to be rescued. This is what he needed more than anything else. And we covered this last week. I talked about how it's very difficult to explain how people are born of the Spirit. Yet Jesus tells us we must be born again. And he used the plural term you, so he was speaking it. In order to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. In that sense that we all must be born again if we're going to see the kingdom of God. We talked about how those that are born again are redeemed. The plan of redemption is through Jesus Christ. We talked about how he, he promises to bring us safely home. He purchased our 
freedom and our forgiveness of sins bought with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. Those that are born again are the redeemed ones. Just like Israel was brought across the Red Sea, redeemed from slavery, we too are enslaved, enslaved to our sins until the Lord Jesus delivers us. And we come to Him and we know what it means to be saved. Also, they're received. Received into the family of God. What does it mean to be born again? It's to be accepted and received into the family of God. The family of God is a big family. And those that believe are received into that family through faith in Jesus Christ. But today, we're going to look at this whole idea of forgiveness, regeneration, sanctification. And I actually want to start in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel. In the Old Testament, Ezekiel, chapter 36. Interesting parallel text with John 3. Ezekiel 36, verse 24. God's word through the prophet to uh, the nation of Israel. And how that he was going to save them, redeem them. Ezekiel 36, verse 24 through 27. If you have that, you can please read it for us. Just stand and read it where you are. <coughs> Think about this passage. In this passage from Ezekiel, we have the basic elements of salvation and, and what it means to be born again. One, we have the idea of forgiveness of sins. Two, we have the idea of being regenerated. And three, we have the idea of sanctification that, come, that is possible by the Spirit living in our lives. So first, forgiveness of sins. See, uh, speaking to Israel... Uh, the Lord said through His prophet that He would sprinkle clean water on them and they would be clean and they would be washed, their filth would be washed away and they would no longer worship idols. And that whole idea is that they would be cleansed. And so that when Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again, within that meaning of that uh, idea is the idea of forgiveness of sin. The gospel offers forgiveness of sins. The message of Jesus Christ tells us, and the, the Bible story tells us, we are lost sinners. And that we must be forgiven of our sins. And otherwise we are separated from God forever. But the good news of the gospel and the death of Jesus and His glorious resurrection is that we can be forgiven of our sins. Hallelujah. No longer held against us, but forgiveness is possible. And in the language of the prophet, sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. In the language of Jesus to uh, Nicodemus, uh, he, he talked about the water and uh, in, let me find it here. Hold on one minute. He said that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. So there it is again. The water and the Spirit. Sprinkle clean water and uh, wash their filth away in Ezekiel's words. 
And uh, in a moment, we'll look in 1 John 2 because it uses the same sort of illusion or comparisons or metaphors to describe what it means to be forgiven of our sins. Washed, clean, forgiven. How wonderful it is to know forgiveness of sins. Then the theological term regeneration comes up. I used uh, several in three different words here. I used regenerated, reformed, and transformed. And I'll talk about each one of them because there's a little different meaning to them, but I wanted to apply them to this idea of being born again. But in Ezekiel's words, he, he, uh, he said, he, in verse 26, I will give you a new heart... And I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And that, that's Ezekiel 36, 26. And he speaks so definitely to the need, our need today. And I know he was speaking to Israel at that time and their stubbornness. But I think across the centuries... He speaks to us today and our stubbornness because in our lost condition, our heart is like a stone. Resistant and rejecting God and God's will. But yet with regeneration, a new heart comes. See, it's not just a matter of I'm going to make my life better. It's a matter of I need a new heart. I need a new life. Now, um, with uh, the idea of the heart, okay? Um, you know, when you say, and men, you say this to your wife always, I know. When you say, honey, I love you with all of my heart, what do you mean? That's what she's thinking. What do you mean? I love you with all of my heart. If you were living in the ancient times, you might say, I love you with all of my liver. Right? Uh -huh. It means everything I am, right? When we talk about being, Ezekiel used the term stony heart. Ladies, sometimes you think about your husbands, right? You have a heart of stone. Yeah. They may think of you that way too. We have to have our hearts softened. In this case, what the preaching of the Word of God does, and the reminder that we're sinners, it softens our heart that we might see our need to have a new heart. When we are convicted of our sin, and we realize it separates us from God, and we realize we need God to put in us a new heart, a new life. And so when Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. In other words, there's no other way, Nicodemus. You must have a new heart. Nicodemus and the thousands of Pharisees of his day thought everything was correct. And they were respected for their belief and their commitment, their devotion to God and to the, to the law. They were very well respected for that. And they gave guidance to the people and, and to the nation as a whole direction. But yet Jesus came along and said, this is not enough. Your heart is hard. You need a new heart. Regeneration. This is what happens in regeneration. That, that which was old and stony becomes new. The third aspect of this born again experience is sanctification. It begins, and if we look in verse, I think it's verse 27. He said, I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. 
The idea of being born again is to be born from above. From above. Okay, Nicodemus and everybody could understand being born in this world. They can understand a human birth. We can go to the, all of us came into the world the same way. We can understand the human birth as we 